So uh, for the Merchants of Culture, you spent five years interviewing everybody in the industry, authors, publishers, agents, um, traders. What, um, I mean, here we're wanting to inspire people going into publishing. Do you have a sense of what makes a kind of good publisher? I think various things, probably three stand out as, as the most important. None of this is particularly new. It's, it's what uh, always characterized good publishing. First is good acquisitions, good commissioning, smart, intelligent, clever commissioning. At the, end of the, at the end of the day, whatever technological changes may happen in the industry, the uh, success or otherwise of a publishing house will depend on the content that it controls. And so acquiring and developing good, original, important content is always going to be the critical factor. Uh, and that's always been the case, there's nothing new about that, but it will remain important and if anything will become even more important as uh, the technological conditions of publishing change, the content, the, the content you control will, will become an absolutely critical factor and ensuring that you control that and, main, and, and, and don't lose control of it will also be critical in the future. I think a second factor that, that uh, determines success or otherwise of a publishing house is uh, their ability to control costs. So managing your cost structure very effectively, cutting out wastage in the supply uh, chain, and ensuring that you're getting the best value uh, at every point in, in the production process is always going to be a very important factor. Um, profit margins are pretty low in trade publishing, and so failure and inability to control costs can have a very um, negative effect on your profitability. So the most successful publishing houses uh, have been those that are able to control their costs very effectively and to eliminate wastage in the failure and inability to control costs can have a very um, negative effect on your profitability. I think the third factor I would say is important is uh, it's a rather old-fashioned notion, but it's publishing for the long term. Um, much of the logic of the field of trade publishing has forced many publishers, especially the big houses, to become very short-termist in their attitude, publishing for the front list for a very short time period and trying to find bestsellers that will have a big splash and a big hit in the coming financial year. But I think many of the best publishing houses are the most stable publishing houses are those who have published effectively for the backlist and who are able to take a long-term view and not focus excessively on those short-term front list best sellers. So I think, for example, of someone like Peter Workman in the US who publishes very effectively for the backlist and he has a very um, strong publishing house precisely because he is a um, long-term backlist publisher and that gives the company a great deal of stability. So I would say that's also a critical factor. When we're exploring the, uh, the evolution here of the different publishing houses, particularly in, in the UK, that whole thing about publishing uh, backlist is just fascinating to yes. look at exactly how yes. that works yes. over 200 years Absolutely. and really see the benefits of that. Absolutely. So. And having a strong backlist is, is so important for a publishing house because it it doesn't require a great deal of investment. Mm. You, the advance has only been either paid off or, or written down, and um, marketing costs are not as high as they are on the front of titles. And if you get the other factors in terms of production pricing right, you get a very good margin on backlist titles. So if you have a strong backlist, it's a very important counterweight mm. to the riskiness and serendipity of front list trade publishing. But the publishing houses differ enormously on, on the percentage um, of their revenues that are accounted for by front list versus back list. So it's often said now that we're witnessing a convergence of media and technological platforms. Do you think the way we are reading is changing? Do you have an opinion on from having spoken to the people in the business? And what do publishers need to do to consider going forward? Well, the truth is no one knows the answer to your question. There's a great deal of speculation about how reading is changing and how people's ability to read is changing. Some people speculate um, that 
that the internet is creating a kind of inability to concentrate and therefore it's undermining um, uh, the, the ability of people to read extended texts. My own view is that a lot of this is very, very speculative. It's very poorly grounded and poorly argued. Uh, there is just very little good empirical research that would enable you to answer your question in a convincing way. And most of the research that's been done on reading, as far as I can see, is not very thorough and not very convincing in terms of understanding what's actually happening in the domain of reading and of the role of reading in people's lives today. So I think the answer to your question is we simply don't know. Um, it is, however, evidently the case that, 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 um, that uh, reading devices are becoming more popular. Uh, there's no doubt about that. There is a serious growth in um, e-book sales and, and, and the use of e-book reading devices, especially the Kindle and, and the Nook and, and other devices of that kind. So people are reading in, from different platforms. They're not necessarily reading from the traditional platform of the print and paper book, but um, many people are reading in new ways and on new devices. Um, we don't know what the long-term implications of that will be. We don't know how it's going to um, develop over time, and so on and so forth. So what does a publisher do in this situation? I would say the key thing for the publisher is to be prepared for an uncertain future and to ensure that you have your content in forms, in electronic and digital forms, that enable you to deliver it in the future to readers in whatever ways readers would like to read it. Uh, so the publisher really is in the position of a water company that controls the water but doesn't own the pipes through which the water is delivered to the users of the water. And the pipes are like different formats of reading, different reading devices that are used by readers. And the important thing for the publisher is to ensure that you are able to deliver your water down whatever pipe people want to receive it through. Uh, and that the publisher must also try to ensure that there isn't just one pipe, that is, there isn't a monopoly on the supply chain. So there's just one company or um, one service provider or one organ technology company or retailer controls access to the customers. That's why it was so important for publishers to try to ensure that there was more than simply Amazon in the marketplace for ebooks. There need to be a variety of different suppliers and retailers uh, who are able to make your content available to readers and users of your content. But the key thing for the publisher is to ensure that the content you have is converted properly into the right kinds of digital formats that enable you to deliver it down the different channels that readers want to receive it in.